Welcome back to the Resistance Broadcast. My name is John Hoey. Thank you so much for joining us today and being a part of the Resistance. We are a week into Episode 9 filming, and we have a lot to talk about today because we have a very special guest with us today. But first, joining us, as always, the crew is James Bainey and Lacey Gillerin. What's going on, guys? It's going good, man. I'm excited to talk about all the stuff that we're talking tonight. We're talking Carrie. We're talking a little bit of Solo. Uh, I'm just excited to get this episode going. How you doing, Lacey? I'm good, knowing that our guest dressed up as Kylo Ren. I'm like super excited to talk about it. Um, so I'm going to let him go right into it. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, after that, That's I don't fun. even know if we need an intro for this guy, because <laughs> dressing up as Kylo Ren's enough for Lacey. But he is an ABC News correspondent. He helmed the Force of Sound documentary, also gave us a look inside ILM, performed Star Wars interviews from the red carpet. More importantly, he's a huge Star Wars fan himself, who goes Star Wars treasure hunting with his son from ABC News, Clayton Sanders. Mandel. What's going on, Clayton? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's going yeah. well. Yes. Yeah, this is fun. This is fun. And I was uh, earlier, we were kind of talking, and, and, you know, this is great for me because normally what we do and what we were doing today is uh, stories about tragedy and death and destruction. So it is awesome to come on and just rap about Star Wars. Yeah, and, th- and that's that's a key thing. Star Wars is fun, and sometimes we forget that, but uh, that's really what it boils down to. Yeah, so thanks for having me on. It's been fun. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. I know you're very busy, so we really appreciate it. No worries. No worries. All right. So, yeah, there's some things that we want to get into. Obviously, we want to get into a deeper discussion later about a hot topic being uh, bringing back Carrie Fisher as Leia. But um, first, we just want to briefly get to know if you can tell our audience a little bit about yourself and kind of what uh, how long you've been a Star Wars fan and, and why you love it. Um, I have been a Star Wars fan since I was four years old. I distinctly remember my aunt and uncle taking me to the little theater in Riverside, California, um, and them kind of explaining Star Wars before the movie started and who the guys in white were at the beginning and Darth Vader's the guy in black, he's the bad guy. Um, and just, uh, having that film just, just put its hooks into my DNA I had, uh, I still have it over there on the shelf. My uh, my vinyl Star Wars record mm-hmm. and soundtrack, <laughs> oh, wow. and uh, uh, you know, just fell in love with John Williams and the music and the toys and all of that stuff. You know, at four years old, it just it's those are your your most delicate formative years, and it just was a great <laughs> time to have that happen. Um, and so, uh, so I, you know, just like all kids and friends of my age, we were all into it and uh, waited in line for like four hours for Empire Strikes Back with my aunt Dana, uh, and just you know, just 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 loved everything about it. Played played it as much as possible. Played the music, um, and then when Return of the Jedi came and went, is when I kind of got into the more behind the scenes sort of stuff because that's when ILM started putting out books and I kind of got into reading um, right uh, you know Cinefex and and those uh, magazines and stuff and not just Star Wars but but all all the movie ET and all the yeah. special effects stuff so, oh, yeah, so I just absolutely. I just kind of got into uh, the behind the scenes stuff which is which is fun um, not really realizing that thinking that Star Wars was coming back I kind of figured it was done <laughs> sure. yeah right so and it, and it came back twice. It came back via the prequels, and then we thought it was done again, and here we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Once again with another trilogy. Yeah, we'll yeah. be doing this podcast, and we'll all be like 80 years old, and we'll be like, oh, <laughs> that new trilogy is coming out. How about that? Yeah, I think... I think uh, Episode 27, hitting theaters. Episode 27, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it just came... Uh, to just to be one of those... Uh, I was just lucky to hit it the right time, and it just became one of those... Uh, things that for real as long as far back as i can remember it's just always been there um Mm -hmm. and i i didn't love the prequels but i'm like a reformed prequelist at this point because sure i I love that reformed yeah yeah yeah, i mean i i I honestly didn't didn't dig them when they came out but as uh time has gone on and um the universe has, has expanded and uh the other important thing is having kids my son's favorite character is Jar Jar Binks, and we were talking about. Oh wow! We were talking about collecting, and and we found a Jar Jar Binks at a yard sale the other day. And so I've kind of come to see them in a in a whole new light, and with the addition of the TV shows and the comic books and the books and everything else, 
yeah, I, ha I have a better appreciation now for where they fit into the overall uh, galaxy. And so we were we were rewatching uh, Attack of the Clones just over the weekend, just yeah. for fun. Uh, so, nice. uh, and yeah, now to have it back, um, 2015, when when they announced that the company had been sold and that that Force Awakens was coming back in 2015, it just set off. I've said it, uh, described it as the fandom awakening because mm -hmm. i kind of thought you know i always loved it but i i wasn't um uh uh it's just it's just when it came back it was just like oh this is like just the greatest thing ever and i went to celebration anaheim as a fan really i had actually taken time off work i bought my three-day pass i told i told him i was going to be in anaheim and <laughs> Uh, it was so cool to go there. It was my first celebration. It was just so cool to see all the people that were there, the fandom in one place, everybody with this common love. I mean, the, the spirit of the thing was just so um, refreshing, really. Uh, and and mm -hmm. I met people there that I still keep in touch with um, and follow on Twitter, you know, or the, the whole Star Wars Twitter community. I kind of became aware of and, and podcasting um the podcasting community so it just opened up this crazy new world of fandom for me that i really didn't even realize was there and i went to celebration and had fully intended just to go for fun my buddy brian and i were going to go and hang out and about a week before I, my bureau chief in los angeles said you know if you're gonna be there anyway you may as well do some work and file and i was like <laughs> oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, okay so we did and uh at the time, I think Sarah Haynes came out and did an interview with JJ and Kathleen Kennedy, uh, and then uh, a producer, Ronnie, and I ran around Celebration and just did everything else. We did World News Tonight when the day of the trailer came out, uh, the Chewy Were Home trailer. We did uh, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of stuff for online, and it just it was so much fun. And uh, so at that moment, I kind of decided I was going to try and, you know stick my claws into <laughs> this is my covering <laughs> it whenever i could yeah yeah and <laughs> and and not just doing it when a movie came out i, I was going to try and and focus on on other things at, from from a culture standpoint and a fandom standpoint and so we did um 2016 i guess it was we did a whole nightline on some guys that were making uh, men and women who were making a fan film uh, that ended up, we followed them from shooting. We went out to Glamis in Southern California where they did some of Return of the Jedi into the desert, uh, mm -hmm. followed them on their little set and, and watched them make <laughs> this uh, this fan film, which turned out to be really great. Uh, but what was so awesome about that is you're standing in Glamis and you've got all these members of the 501st who are coming over these giant sand dunes, you know, with... <laughs> in TK Stormtrooper armor and Boba Fett, and it was just like really, really fun. And they went, they went, they went on to win the uh, the fan favorite award, I think it was. And so we followed them all the way to Celebration London, and were on the stage with them when their names got announced. And so, so we've tried to do some of that kind of stuff. And I think Force of Sound falls into that category. It's um, mm -hmm. you know the stuff that that I'm trying to. Uh, get in and, and do the stories that that are fun, even when there's uh, not a movie, big movie release coming out. So that's kind of where the, my approach has been for the last two or three years, and it's been awesome. That's a that's a perfect niche right there, and it sounds like it's almost the 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 child that you were getting into the behind the scenes stuff has come full circle in your professional life. So it's like you've grown up, but you're you're doing what you always loved uh, in terms of the behind the scenes element, which I find interesting. Yeah, it, it blows me away because there are still people uh, at ILM today who uh, their pictures are in the books that I have on my shelf over here. And it's yeah. like, <laughs> oh, you're, oh, that, that guy, oh, you know, and it, you walk down the halls and some of these folks are still there. And uh, so it's it's definitely, there's a lot of little pinch me moments as we, as we've done some of these stories. It's pretty cool. Excellent. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if Star Wars has ever been bigger than it is now. And I know you're, you're constantly covering this stuff. So what's going on uh, from, from your vantage point uh, that you could tell us about the world of Star Wars that our listeners may like to hear about? I, I'm so excited about uh, uh, the Carrie news. I did not expect that. Did not see it coming. I was actually at, mm -hmm. I was actually at ILM last week um, 
at Lucasfilm last week, and this is why I give huge credit to that operation because I talked to all sorts of people. Nobody said anything. <laughs> nobody, wow. nobody hinted. Nobody, and I know some of them knew this was coming. Uh, but nobody hinted at it. Nothing. I, it, it was great. No one walked up to you with like uh, cinnamon rolls on their ears, like <laughs> right. wink, wink. No. Right, right. <laughs> You're gonna want to pay attention on Friday. It was Friday, right? That, yeah. the, that the announcement came out, um, which was surprising. It was on a Friday, but yeah, I, I, I have no idea what the what the timing of it was. You know, the only thing I could think of is that maybe they were they were trying to wait because it was odd how. The, the announcement came out, and then like an hour or two later, if that, was the, mm-hmm. the addition of Kerry Russell. So I wonder mm-hmm. if they were trying to delay it until they had everybody on board, but that, that's just... Oh, that makes sense. That's just me guessing. I have no idea. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty fun. Um, well, we have um, nine we're going to get into a little yeah. later with the Kerry stuff, but I know you had mentioned uh, off-air that you wanted to get into some stuff about Solo, which took a hit at the box office, but has a home video release coming up. Yeah, home video release is coming up, and, you know, the things that I've heard, um, just sort of the, the internal uh, rumblings as they as they market this thing, um, I think one of the things that you may see as, as we get closer to the release and they start running commercials or videos or more marketing... Um, I think there is a sense that they missed in the original marketing and trailers playing up the romance angle between Solo and, and Kira. And I, so hmm. I, think, I think part of what you'll see is, is uh, more of an emphasis on that, I think, um, in, in some of the commercials and marketing, maybe in some of the, uh, the special features. I'm, I'm not sure. Actually, I actually haven't. I, I don't know what the list of – they haven't announced what the special features are yet, right? They did put them out. Oh, have yes. they? Um, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, some of them are pretty like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. It's, you know, seeing Jonas get into the Chewbacca right. costume. Right. right. And, yeah. But then a, a list then, of then deleted some... scenes, I believe, as well. Yeah. Okay. Like the snowball fights and uh, Han and the Imperial Navy and, and a bunch of stuff like that. But um, I, I wanted to ask you, do you think there was a misfire on the initial marketing? Because we've heard, and I don't know if this is true, it's obviously a rumor that Disney uh, Lucasfilm wanted to push this thing to December, and Disney kind of put their foot down. And did did, did Solo that, get yeah. punished? Did Solo get punished in marketing? And, and now they're trying to make up for it in a different angle with the home video. I don't know. You know, I think uh, some of the internal discussions that I've heard, and and I haven't heard uh, a lot, and and this could be just a, a tiny piece of it. But what I have heard is that sort of the after action report, if you will, is that one of the biggest things they uh, ran into was franchise fatigue, uh, as well hmm. I mean, as as well as there being other things out at the box office at that time. Uh, and yeah, I, mm-hmm. I I don't know if if I honestly don't know the answer to uh, whether or not uh, they wanted to push it. What what that discussion was like pushing the date back versus keeping it where it was. Okay. I know that there were there are dates, uh, and you guys may know better than me, but in December uh, there are. There are big Disney releases in December. Is it Mary Poppins in December? Uh, Wreck-It yes. Ralph, I think, is November, and then Mary Poppins is December. And... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's Nutcracker, that's, uh... I think, is December too. Uh, right. Nutcracker. Yeah. So I know that there was some sense that they had other things. They had a pretty full slate around the holidays this year, mm-hmm. um, and so that probably played a big factor as well in not okay. in not moving it but uh i loved it i really did uh <laughs> I, and i've only seen it three times it's it is oops it is um still in a theater believe it or not here in uh highlands ranch colorado oh wow uh, holding strong <laughs> yeah i somebody uh somebody was online yesterday saying that it was out of the theaters i guess in like la um, and I happened to go on, on, uh, online yesterday to just to double check. And there were, there were three or four showings yesterday, but the calendar only went like three days into the future. So I think time is, yeah. is, <laughs> is running out. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it. And I started, I felt like the first time that I saw it, uh, almost didn't count in the sense that you're watching it and you're you're now realizing how they used certain things and how what certain character relationships were and you're like oh that's how they did that or that's how they use that 
And so I felt like the first time I missed a whole bunch of stuff. And it was on the second and third viewing that I, I really found an appreciation for Alden's performance um, and the music and, and everything else. I, I felt the, it, it, for me, got so much better on, multi, on, on additional viewings. I don't know what you guys thought. Yeah, I was so excited the first time. I think I missed things because I was just so pumped to be watching a Star yeah. Wars movie. Yeah, <laughs> same here. But same yeah, here. the second, the second and third time, it was definitely. Just, I think I, I loved it. I just it was so great. I think I'm the opposite of Lacey. Like, I think I enjoyed the movie the second and third time because I sat back and just watched it as a fan. Whereas yeah. the first time, I'm like, where are the Easter eggs? I want to absorb every <laughs> <Yes>. detail. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I agree. Well, James is our Easter egg guy. He's yeah. always like, D- "Can you believe they did this?" I'm like, "They did. They did that." I'm <laughs> yeah, like, "I missed cool. that." I'm like, "Come on." That's cool. That's cool. Have you written about that, James? Because I actually haven't written a lot. I haven't read a lot of good solo Easter. Eggs um, I mean, the podcast is my main outlet, so I get on cool. here and they just they just let me like rant for ten minutes. Awesome. While I'm like, okay, so Lando mentioned <laughs> the Black Spires, which is coming out in the theme park. You know, like it just like oh, all right. these little details and stuff. Right. Yeah. Usually, how it goes down is if they're. If a trailer comes out and we have to like write a breakdown on Star Wars Newsnet, we'll always like James will always tweet something that he saw and we'll take his tweet and throw it in that part of the article. Yeah, nice. And be like, look what James pointed an arrow to. And it's like, oh, that's Nien Nub or they something. Added you know, like- Chewbacca to the second trailer. Like, what a weird yeah, coincidence. Yeah. All of awesome. a sudden, Chewie's carrying luggage. Why is he doing this? Like, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> so now that. Solo is all but in our rearview mirror. Obviously, we have the home release coming out with the romance angle. Um, we're we got our eyes on Celebration for uh, 2019, and we're we're all going here, and we're pumped about an episode nine teaser. Maybe doing a podcast panel. Oh yeah. Do you know anything else that we may possibly hear uh, coming down the pipe? I think you will get some sort of news on standalones. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I think you will get standalone uh, news. I, I don't know what. I don't know which. I don't know what movies, but I think there will be some news uh, on that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I'm just now. Yeah, go ahead. So, well, s- since you don't know, um, as just purely as a fan, which would you p- bet your original exactly, vinyl yeah. Star Wars soundtrack on? <laughs> <sighs> yeah. And, um, and then maybe what do you hope to see too? Like, what do you yeah, think will yeah. happen? Then what would you like ideally like to see? What's your perfect standalone? Yeah, like has there been a standalone you've been pushing for yourself as a fan or anything like that too? No, I've joked. Uh, I've joked. I wanted to see a Lobot standalone, but no, nice. I, I really no. I, I don't. I don't. I don't have any. Um, I, I mean, it, would, it could be cool. I would watch. I, I would love to watch a, an Obi Wan standalone. Why not? Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, but no, I'm, I don't. I'm not really jonesing for a, a particular character to see in a in a standalone. I mean, a fat one would be cool. I mean, why not? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I think you'll see something uh, at celebration. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hey, quick side hey, question. Yeah. Have you read the Lando comic? I've not read the Lando comic. I'm way behind. I'm still on on Vader uh, and and some of the other ones. No, I haven't read Lando. Just you since like you it? mentioned Lo- Lobot as a. Oh. Uh, as a character you I guess enjoy a favorite of yours he yeah, has some he's cool, he yeah. has some deep dive in that okay. and you get to really see like his personality and stuff it's a, nice. it's a great issue nice okay i'll have to check that one out i, jo- so. I joke about like you joked about the lobot standalone i always joke about a salacious b crumb standalone oh, just yeah, cuz i think sure. that character's funny <laughs> But but I honestly feel like I need an Obi Wan standalone just yeah. so Ewan McGregor stops getting asked about if he <laughs> wants to play Obi Wan Kenobi. It's yeah. like I can't believe how many times that guy gets asked that question. <laughs> he must have a card he just holds up. Like yeah. yes, he, he'll be asked that question uh, long, uh, like when he's actually Alec Guinness's age when he played the original character. <laughs> sure. he, he'll never get away from it if he doesn't make that movie. Yeah, yeah. Ewan, why do you have a beard? Yeah. Are you playing Obi Wan? Are you filming right now? He's like, no, I just didn't shave this week. Right. Sorry, guys. My favorite thing on the internet this past week was the meme that was like the top eight actors that should play Obi Wan, and it yes. was all yes. different it pictures all him. of Ewan McGregor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good. One. That was pretty good. Oh, that stuff. That was pretty good. Yep. So Man, this is going right. to be your I'm excited third, for news. fourth celebration, then. Uh, yeah, yeah, Anaheim, London, uh, yeah, Orlando, yeah, yep. Awesome. So How about you I guys? was my first one was at 2015. And okay. then, because I used to work for Celebration, so I was at okay. 2015, 2016 working, and then I went last year 
as a fan. So it's funny that you and I have probably crossed paths numerous I, times. I'm sure we have <laughs> some line somewhere. Uh, some Exactly. Some metal detector. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, there if you were dressed as Kylo Ren, Lacey probably followed you around for five minutes. Yes. That's probably what held you up on that, probably, that race yeah, you were trying to do. That, that five was, minutes was just me. Just... That, that was totally fun. We went down there with uh, Paula Ferris, who was doing sort of the GMA interviews with the with the main cast. And uh, while we were there, she kind of knew that I was a fan, and and we we came up with uh, with this 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 bit where we were going to. She dressed up as Ray. We went to the Anovos booth. Our friends at mm-hmm. Anovos hooked us up with a, a, a cool Ray costume and a, and a Kylo Ren costume. And that thing, it is so heavy, and there are so many layers <laughs> to it. Uh, and it's apparently this this costume was very very similar uh, materials and and build and and weight and everything that that Adam Driver wore. So yeah, we ran around the celebration floor uh, just doing goofy bits and <laughs> lightsaber battles and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, and that was fun. Yeah, that ended up on GMA, I think, uh, one morning or two. But yeah, that was that was that was totally fun. But I took the helmet off and took it off, and I had sweated off like five pounds. It was just like <laughs> the Kylo diet. Yeah, the Kylo <laughs> diet. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah, that stuff was fun, and it was uh, it was cool to see the cast all all in the same room. And and I had never been. I'd, I've never met or interviewed Harrison, and so it was cool to see him there in the same room and and all of, all of that. It was it was awesome. It was great. That sounds great. Nice. Um, so before we get into our big discussion about Carrie and Leia and how they how we think they're going to tackle that, um, do you have any other nuggets or anything you'd like to share with us in our audience? Uh no, just we talked about collecting. My other hobby lately has just been running to uh, garage sales. I, I on Facebook. Uh, marketplace. I have keyword Star Wars and, and I do so, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so we've ended up, and I, I'm not like a collector. I am not a collector. I'm, I'm, I, I call myself like an opportunistic collector because I'm not looking for stuff to uh, keep around, uh, you know, and have, have, uh, you know, keep in the box. Like, this is not a house where we keep stuff in the box. We, we open it up. I've got a four year old. It's impossible to bring anything inside the house that's yeah. in a box and expect him to um, uh, not want to have me open it up. So so we open stuff right. up and play with it. But yeah, we've got. Uh, I've been on a ship's tear lately. I got an A wing. I actually got two nice. A wings. Nice. I got a Tie Fighter. Um, I got a Y wing the other day, which was awesome. I, I you know it's just stuff that. I probably that I really wanted as a kid and could never afford to buy. And now people are, you know, whenever people want to get rid of stuff um, and, and it's close enough and it's cheap enough, we'll, we'll run over there. And... Well, I, I might as well ask you now then out of all of your treasure hunts and all that stuff, what, what were you and your son? What was the one like gold mine? You were like, oh, I can't believe we just got this for this much. Like you, something that you were like, wow. An ad at for uh, a, a lady the the not the early version it was the 95 version or 97 mm-hmm. version or whatever oh, it was. the power of the force power yeah. of the force at at uh i had always uh coveted uh an at at and a lady nice a lady had one i don't think she she sold it to me for like 30 bucks and we ran over and picked it up <laughs> and uh i don't think she knew you know i think I, I i must the alert popped up and i must have messaged her first and uh and we were lucky <laughs> enough to get over there, but that's been yeah. that's been a, a a true highlight. And my I son almost... loves these GI Joes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, and then the other, the only other thing that I almost collected, which I didn't, I was at. This was about three weeks ago. I was at. I was on the Disney lot in Burbank for a meeting, and I'm walking into this building, and these guys are bringing out one of those giant. Millennium Falcon solo displays that you could sit in, you know, the whole thing that everybody <laughs> oh, was, yeah. movie everybody was the movie theater ones that people were taking out, taking their pictures in and, and tweeting. And uh, they were loading it. They were taking it out of the building and loading it into a truck, just throwing it into a truck. <laughs> yeah. And I walked past the guy and I said, what are you guys doing with that? And he goes, oh, we're just taking it to recycling. He goes, do you want it? And I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm... Uh, I'm I'm there on business. I'm like traveling, and I'm, I thought for a second, like, how what can I take? I gotta fly with it. What? And then it was like, what you should have I, taken what, a piece of it. What would my <laughs> wife think? Yeah, I know. I almost I should have taken the uh, I should have taken the solo part of it. So I, I I ended up I ended up 
passing on that but i almost uh. had the giant solo <laughs> display and i explained this to the guy and he's like yeah my whole my the the guy who was taking it out and loading it into the truck he goes yeah my whole garage is like cocoa right now so <laughs> there's like <laughs> no room there's no room for any of this stuff so i i passed on that but yeah so the 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 opportunistic fun collecting has been has been cool because mm -hmm. it's fun to see my son play with this stuff oh yeah uh, and yeah. we play with it together we run around the house he'll have a tie fighter and i'll have a y-wing or whatever and we'll well, and so you're not you're not like uh, President Business from uh, the Lego no, movie where no. you're like you cannot play with that that way. No, in <laughs> fact, in fact, this guy we were at a, uh, over the weekend. Uh, this guy had a whole bunch of stuff that had never been taken out of the box, and he had uh, I don't have it here, but he had a, a tall like Luke Skywalker in Hoth gear and a whole bunch of stuff like that. He had a Tarkin. He had all sorts of cool stuff. But none of this stuff had ever been out of the box, and I didn't have the heart to tell him that <laughs> five minutes after we got home. <laughs> oh, ripped it man. out of the package and we were playing yeah, sure. with it it's just like yeah i can't keep it in the box not not with this <laughs> not with not with this little one around so you just take photos of the you just deliver the old shredded boxes back to him and just like yeah. destroy his yeah. Dream. So, yeah. sorry yeah <laughs> sorry buddy <laughs> sorry. we don't need these yeah um all right so I think now it's time for us to get into our main discussion, um, bringing Leia to life in episode nine. Uh, we thought JJ's hardest task for Star Wars will be bringing Star Wars back to life with The Force Awakens, but now he has an arguably more difficult task, bringing Leia with Carrie Fisher for episode nine, doing it right, having it, having it make sense, and fit the film while respecting Carrie Fisher and her legacy. So let's talk about how we think they'll pull this off and what we think they'll do. Now, Clayton, I know... Um, you visited with ILM and saw how they kind of brought Leia back via CGI and motion capture. Um, what's your take on how you think JJ and crew are going to tackle this and do it the right way? Yeah, I was very surprised and very excited because we had heard all along uh, that, that they would not do uh, a, a CG version of, of Carrie Fisher. That was just off the table from the beginning. Um, and I don't know that they would have been able to to do it. I mean, I think they did a great job in, in Rogue One. I think, I think, uh, um, uh, I think it would have been much harder to pull off in, in any kind of CG fashion. Um, but I was really mm -hmm. excited to hear how this, uh, how they, how they plan on doing it with this unused footage because my mind immediately went to celebration last year when John Knoll did this whole presentation using, uh, showing the, the unused uh, takes of, of all the rebel pilots in the cockpits, which they then um, reused and, and digitally cut them out of the background and put them into new uh, CG cockpits and, and were able to reuse all of that footage. And, and so I got really excited, not only that they were using reused footage or old footage, unused footage, I should say, um, but also it'll be really interesting to see if they do any kind of digital magic manipulation with it, like taking Carrie's performance and, and maybe putting her in a different location, a different planet from where uh, it yeah. was shot, where it was shot at. Um, and I actually, uh, I, I talked to Todd Fisher today about all of this and he has been talking to JJ about it, JJ Abrams. Sure. Um, and he said, um, I asked him because I was curious, you know, the, the press release said they were using unused footage from The Force Awakens. And I asked him about The Last Jedi. And he said, he told me that they are also using unused footage from The Last Jedi. Um, oh, okay. Wow. So not only, not, not only from The Force Awakens, but apparently they are also using unused footage from The Last Jedi. And... Uh, and I said, well, how many minutes do they have of this stuff? And he goes, I can't tell you that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he, he, Don't you wish you could just go through a library and watch all the unused footage? Because yeah. I would literally love to do that. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. right. So so they apparently have all, uh, a, a number of minutes of unused footage, both from The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. And, well, um, they have like 38 slap takes, too. Right, yeah, you could do, <laughs> yeah, you could do a whole, whole movie just with slap takes, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but he, uh, Todd Fisher said that um, uh, he, he's very excited. The whole family is really excited about this um, and wanted it to happen. And uh, he says that he says that 
There are, his exact quote was big surprises. There are big surprises coming with this movie and with this performance and with this unused footage. And he said, this, this one is really for the fans, he says. So, wow. He wouldn't tell yes. me any more detail. He was being very, very careful not to, not to reveal anything else. But um, you demand, but, Todd. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Based yeah, on what so you're saying, I got a question. Do, do, you, do you think she makes it through the movie? Do you think that's the surprise? Makes it through the movie? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. I, I have no I idea. Ha- no idea. I have to think then the way he is, his quotes are sounding, it sounds like he is fully in on exactly what they're doing with the character. So yeah. it's not just a, we give you your blessing yeah. and do what you need to do, JJ. It sounds like they ran it by all the details by the family and almost got a overall approval. I, I think it came afterward. I think I think it was kind of in the works and uh, and they kind of came to the family after and said, this is what we, we plan on doing. I, I'm not completely clear on that chronology but that that was my sense of it talking to him so uh but whatever they are doing uh billy lord the the, the entire family is apparently 100 percent behind it yeah it's just so awesome that the family like they're giving the family the ability to even be considered because i mean look at tons of other movie people that are just like nah we're gonna make our decisions and not include you so the mm-hmm. idea yeah, they didn't that, ask like, the cushing family did they who's <laughs> <laughs> <We're> gonna <laughs> remake tarkin <laughs> <laughs> that they're just like they know that this is sensitive to the family and to the fans and to everybody involved that they're taking the time to like really do this right it's just really meaningful yeah. i'm sure to everyone it means something to me because she's like the first person i loved in star wars so yeah, yeah, no, it's it, it's I have I have uh, all the faith that JJ and and team will find a clever and appropriate way to weave all of this footage together. And I was thinking about it today. It's like think about being the actor who now has to because I'm sure she'll have dialogue with people that they'll have to reshoot, and there will be yeah. scenes that they make up out of nothing. And so you're going to have actors who are in these scenes playing uh, playing against this uh footage that they have which will be uh i I bet that would be a a tough thing to do it's kind of like with deadpool where they act against juggernaut because juggernaut wasn't there in deadpool oh Uh, right yeah 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 so it'll be i'm fascinated to see uh what they what they come up with i wonder if they'll get the guy who was the stand-in for job of the hut in a new hope with his furry coat and just be like, okay, you're going to talk to that guy. Declan, Declan (laughs) something, right? What was that guy's name? He has experience Um, being the random stand-in for a a character. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. exactly. It's on his resume. He still has that old resume. Um, So that actually, so has this been, have you written a report on this anywhere that uh, about the whole TLJ scenes being a, used for this or is this um uh i have not an- no as we record this this conversation with todd was uh about an hour and a half old so no i haven't i haven't oh, wow. i haven't written or tweeted about it yet that's oh, awesome cool. yeah. thank you very much for sharing about it and i'll hold it for you i won't say anything <laughs> we appreciate that <laughs> i i am curious where they're going to go with the character i know james just brought up the idea that i didn't even think about that leia you know potentially surviving the movie and it being a happy ending and you're, you're kind of saying like it's going to be for the fans and that leads me to think like oh they're not going to kill off leia because they're mad that they killed too, off luke so or too close to home like now they're killing yeah. off a character that we're all like yeah, I don't know. Aware of her real life death, you know, it's like to see right. her die on screen makes it feel like we're watching her real life death or something. So I don't know. It's tricky any way you do it, and uh, it yeah, there, there will be people who will not be happy either way. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine uh, the challenge that they must be facing with this. Yeah, we we had that script. discussion a while ago. You know, uh, you know, is she going to be in episode nine? What are we going to do? And we came to the conclusion that no matter what you do, there's going to be like 80% of people who thought they should have done one of the other options. Right. You right. know, only like 20% of people are going to be like, well, I'm glad they did what I thought they were going to do, which is reuse old footage. But mm-hmm. there's going to be people who are like, they should have recast her, you know, and they'll just be bummed about that when they go in the movie. So it, it's it's definitely yeah. tricky. I do not envy J.J. J. Abrams' position um, right now. Yeah, nor, nor do I. And and like people were asking me uh, before Solo what my expectations for Solo were. And my honest answer is I, I try not 
as much as possible. I try not to have any expectations going in because you just mm-hmm. end up disappointed either way. So, uh, right. I'm 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 uh, gladly uh, waiting to be surprised. But man, or, or the folks that yeah write their plots and then the, their plots don't come true and right you know. right. I think it's important that they announced it, one, because then it would be like people trying to... If, if that came up through rumors instead, I think it was right that they addressed it head on. I know JJ likes to be um, secretive at times. Yeah. But also that they were very public about the family support, because then you may have the haters saying, like, how can you do this to Carrie? And then, well, it's like, well, pal, listen, her family is 100% behind it, so maybe you should be too. Yeah, I thought, yeah. That, I thought that statement, I thought that whole thing did a good job of kind of getting ahead of it to the extent that they can. I think they've done that all together. They've been very straightforward. I mean, from the announcement last week with all the cast, they didn't have to announce all those people, but they did. And Mm. then the picture that they Mm -hmm. posted with, um, you know, the shot and then his explanation of the Carrie Fisher thing and then all this news is coming out. It seems like they're being very straightforward. And then the Star Wars show, they said that they're going to give live updates from JJ on his Instagram and via their their website so i think they're they're trying to control the stuff that's coming off the set and Mm. and telling their narrative which is very different from force awakens and last jedi and solo which solo so much stuff leaked so it's like i'm sure they're just trying to control it well i think they liked what ron howard was doing right i think they got a vibe from that and i think they said that the fans are appreciating this we're not really giving anything away it's just right. fun and we're showing them little things and we're controlling a lot of the information that's coming off of the film set so um i think they're maybe talking to jj and saying yeah, you know hey help us out a little bit maybe yeah right. give us a little peek into that mystery box every once in a while little mm-hmm. things that don't really matter but they make the fans feel like uh, they don't crave it as much or something he made that Twitter account a while ago. Yeah I, I, yeah, I made a joke today on Twitter about it. I'm like, the good thing about J.J. Abrams' Twitter account is he has no tweets he has to go back and delete, literally. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is that. He yeah. has one tweet, and it was today. <laughs> um, do you guys think that, assuming we get the first trailer, the first look at Episode Nine at Celebration, do you think that that first look has any Carrie Fisher in it? Or do you think they hold that off for a for a later trailer uh, I think I w- it will you think you think later no I think they will have at least a clip oh, of her beginning. or a snapshot or something I think they may hold off until the big trailer uh, w- maybe we'll get a tease I think we may get a taste or a tease sometime before celebration because that is a long time that's not until April right that's uh, mm-hmm. that's yeah. that's a ways off so we mm-hmm. might get like a little behind the scenes something um one of those little mashups that they do um we, that i don't think i'll have carry in my my this is total speculation and guess but i think sure. they may do it kind of like they did with uh with han solo i mean we didn't see han solo until that the end of that big trailer uh, but that was the celebration trailer that so was the celebration that, trailer there but was like a little teaser seen, beforehand yeah, the teaser yeah. right 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 i think that teaser might have just existed simply because it was episode seven and mm-hmm. star Wars is coming back. But I do mm-hmm. kind of feel that if the, the first real trailer of episode seven was that Chewie were home, boom, Harrison Ford, there he is. You know, the first real trailer we got of last Jedi is it's time for the Jedi to end. Boom. Mark Hamill. There he is. Mm-hmm. I, I could see this, this big celebration Chicago trailer mm-hmm. being, Everything leading up to this and that last final scene is boom. There she is, Carrie Fisher, and the, and the and they turn out the lights, you know, and the whole place just goes nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's the Chewy were home moment. I agree, hundred exactly. percent. Take yeah, right, right. Take some Kleenex into that one for sure. Yeah, Ooh, <laughs> right. I'm feel I'm feeling it now just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they might put something out before that though. Like that's possible. I like Force Awakens going back to the first movie. Um, they put something out in November and it was the one where Finn is breathing and then yeah. you see Kylo Ren lighting up his sword and everyone was like, oh my God, that's Luke. He's a bad guy. Um, yeah. I think they you didn't might do, do that something for short Last like Jedi. that in November. Yeah. But right, if they, they did didn't. do that, I could see something similar with like, you know, boom, there's Finn with long, longer hair, you know, and, and then you see uh, Daisy Ridley in a different outfit, something that looks drastically different than what she was wearing in seven and eight mm-hmm. or something, you know, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I could, I could see something like that, but I, I do think Kylo Ren has that. a shaved head. Yeah. Just, it's you know. all the sure. hair is just gone right off the top. <laughs> no, he's got no, the goatee. Absolutely not. 
the... Absolutely not. No, 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 no. <laughs> but they have a ton of movies coming out this fall that if they wanted to push people to those movies, they would put a trailer in front of it. So even if it's a teaser, Ooh, people will go point. to the movie just to see the teaser. Yeah, good point. Excellent mm-hmm. point. Interesting. Yeah, I, I've heard, I heard from someone else, too, that this thing's going to be chock full of fan service. Um, and that's because they said someone at Lucasfilm told them and, you know, whatever. But I, I mean, I could see it happening, but I also think JJ's smart enough not to bring back like another super weapon because he doesn't want to get the backlash that he got from TFA, which I didn't think he deserved, but some people had points on that. So I don't know if we're getting a star killer too or anything like that. So I'm curious what the first order is going to be cooking up for us, but <laughs> we have a redemption. long way to go. So yeah, yeah redemption. <laughs> so we're using footage from deleted scenes. Do you think do you think that they're limited on their scenes which could potentially have dictated the story? Like there's only so many things that she could have said that are generic enough that they could use it in a different story. Mm-hmm. They're not going to use a scene of her saying, "We need to go save Ray from Star Killer Base." They can or use s- ADR with another actress voice, though. Yeah, I mean, it's possible mm-hmm. they could they could maybe show her on camera saying a line, then they show the other person, and you hear somebody else dictating right, lines not... ADR wise or something mm-hmm. in in um, impersonation. Yeah. They cut out something, the whole scene with Maz though from Force Awakens, that, where she's that's talking true. To Maz. But then again, mm-hmm. like what do you think was in that conversation that they could then have carried over? I mean, I, I guess I'm picturing a, a situation where she says, okay, well, well, they've we've only got five takes with her. And with this one, she's talking about eating peanuts. So we have to write the story around eating peanuts <laughs> because we have to be able to use that clip. <laughs> I, you know? Sure. I don't know. What do we all think? Like, Clayton, what what do you think their, their best um, I think, use of this stuff is going to be? I think it'll be a combination. Yeah, I think it'll be, uh, like you are saying, that, that that is actually one I hadn't thought of, is a simple one, which is an ADR replacing sure. somebody's voice. They could, they could find somebody mm-hmm. who sounds like her. Um from, from uh, you know, going low tech all the way to all the way to high tech. And, uh, you know, it's not outside the realm of possibility that they could even do some digital manipulation on lips to even match words. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things they could do. I think it'll be an interesting combination. They could, you know, they could do, she could appear in a hologram of all things, which doesn't even really, I mean... That seems to me like visual from a from a visual effects standpoint, that'd be easier to pull off than right. And it pulls so. it back to the New Hope, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think there's probably uh, all, all kinds of cool techniques used together and in, in, in different combinations that they'll they'll be able to make it work in in the edit room, which is essentially where it'll come together. When JJ started writing this script, was this the first thing that he did? He goes, okay. I want to add Carrie. I'm going to go in, look at what I can do, and I'm going to write the story based around the ability to use the clips that she's in. Or did he write the story and then say, can we use Carrie? Oh, I think we can. And she got put in. I I would guess it was uh, as they're talking about what the story is going to be. It's like this is the biggest challenge of them all how do we how do we work her in so it, it was probably a, a little bit of a combination of both I, I i'm guessing that uh that this idea helped helped guide them um a, a little bit um yeah it's it's t- that's a tough one yeah his tweet today it makes me think about his tweet today now because he said um bittersweet starting this next chapter without carrie but thanks to an extraordinary cast and crew we are ready to go grateful for ryan johnson um so that has that has me thinking like there's the last jedi stuff like that you had told us about uh clayton like grateful that you provided us with this footage that you had shot that you didn't use and uh that's helping me make this possible um Mm -hmm. in, in addition to you know grateful for him making a great movie of course but it's another layer of that i think and JJ was involved with The Last Jedi, just like right. Ryan had seen The Force Awakens. Like, it's all working together. So that's what makes me laugh when I see people talking like, oh, well, JJ can save it. JJ's been involved right. the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 They're not making so, these movies yeah. in a vacuum. Yeah. They are, yeah. Uh, they're, yeah. they're all talking to each other al- along yeah. the way. Right. Um, well, I mean, my closing thoughts on this discussion is that my kind of door just got blown wide open because i was thinking in a very small pocket that 
they're going to show her just because, oh, she just, so she didn't just disappear. Um, they're going to show her briefly somehow, like hologram, whatever. But now that, you know, I'm thinking about all the things that they can possibly do, and you're adding in also the Last Jedi potential scenes and stuff. Like James said, she could be really have a, a sizable part in this movie well beyond her expectations. So now I'm just kind of, whew, yeah, the yeah. door is blown door. wide open now for me. Yeah. And yep. you know, Ryan shot a lot because he shoots everything. <laughs> yeah. He shoots things that he's shooting. He takes pictures of he his does. camera shooting things. So. <laughs> he's so meta, so he probably yeah. has tons yeah. of footage, yeah. Right. That's uh, how he it, got the take of her talking about peanuts. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> yeah, just give right. me a couple lines about peanuts. We'll use it later, maybe. <laughs> nah. So James and Lacey, your final thoughts on this, and then we'll let uh, Clayton give us his closing words on Carrie and Nine. I'll let um, James go first. Yeah, I was going to say uh, something just, th- this goes all the way back to the beginning of the discussion about um, Carrie being represented as a, a CG character um, that I don't, I, I definitely don't think that was ever going to happen considering the uh, the uh, Tarkin situation. Um, I, I think that generally most people didn't even, like most casual Star Wars fans went into Rogue One n- and might possibly not have even realized that that was a CG character, but as soon as she turns around and it's Carrie Fisher and it's one of the big trio, like everybody's like, Oh, you know, like, Oh, they did something. That's, Mm -hmm. they did some sort of CG work there or something. So I think people would have been just staring at every scene with her in it. And it just would have taken away from every moment that she was in the scene. Um, And I, I just don't get the impression that that's still going to be the case. Like I understand she might be like cut and pasted into certain scenes, but I think it's just going to look so good that people aren't going to be focusing on um, the fakeness of it. I think they're going to be like, that's her. That's Mm -hmm. really her acting. That's stay in, um, stay in the moment and don't like correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I think that's the overall vibe of this whole thing. I think that probably is um, one of the best things they could have done uh, to keep her legacy alive as well, you know, for this final installment. It was supposed to be about her from the beginning, and it looks like it might still have a possibility to, for her to have a strong role in this movie um, without even have to lift a finger, I guess you could say. <laughs> Lacey? So I'm kind of, I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of surprised. I'm getting, like, really emotional just talking about this. Um, <laughs> yeah, me too. Because mm-hmm. Yeah, no, like... uh so I grew up on the originals, not the prequels, which is surprising because I grew up during the time of the prequels, but I first saw the originals and mm-hmm. she was such an important character to me as a as a woman, as a young girl and to so many people. So the idea that she's coming back for this movie just means so much to me and so many other people, I'm sure. Um, so I'm so glad that her family's on board and that they're doing it in a way that it's not her being replaced. Because for a long time, people were like, oh, Meryl Streep should play her. Oh, And it, to me, it was just like, okay, Meryl's wonderful. She's glorious. The best of the best. But it's you can't replace Carrie Fisher. Like, it, mm-hmm. she means so much to so many people. Um, so I'm just so excited about the way that they're handling it. And I'm glad. I know John and I have talked about this, that we thought that she was just going to be in the opening crawl. And that's how they were going to handle it with her being dead. Yeah. Um, Because we Mm -hmm. just didn't know how they were going to pull this off without doing CGI. Um, So this is force goes through at the end. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, yeah, it just means so much to me. I used to run around pretending she was my mom, and I was going on missions for her. So that's awesome. Yeah. (laughs) So I would just, oh God, I'm trying not to get emotional, but like I'm just super pumped. I'm excited. I think it's going to be great. Clayton. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia, was my first crush at four or five years old. I mean, so <laughs> so important, and uh, and I and I agree. There was no way to do this with with uh, a CG character. I, you know, even though like my daughter, who is uh, fourteen now, when she saw Rogue One, she had no idea who. Peter Cushing was had no idea whether he was alive or dead, and and so I did this sort of experiment where I asked her. What do you think of that? And she had no idea that it was a CG character. But I just think right. there's there's so much. I mean, everybody knows Carrie Fisher, and and everybody knows her story at this point. And uh, there was just no way uh, to to do it. So you have to have that organic performance, um, which I'm sure they will preserve. And uh, and I think it'll be it'll be not only it will serve the story, um, but I think it'll end up being. Um, 
uh, ultimately a really, really fitting and appropriate tribute to all that she brought to that role over four decades. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Right. So, so I'm really, really excited by it, and I, and I'm excited to hear Todd Fisher say that there will be big surprises, and that this is this is for the fans. I cannot <laughs> wait. Bring tissues. I will. A lot. Yeah, and you sob and, in a movie. And thank you for bringing that info to us, Clayton. We appreciate that. And I think it makes us even all more excited to know that her brother is, is giving it that sort of high praise and, and uh, excitement. Yep. Um, and, and we can all kind of, I guess, picture Carrie kind of making a joke about this saying like, well, at least Photoshop out my wrinkles or something like that, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, so let us know what you guys think. Obviously, there's some news on this that we just gave you, uh, that we have some The Last Jedi uh, deleted scenes coming in and some big surprises and, and all that stuff. So let us know in the comments what you guys think. Hit us up on Twitter at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N. And uh, bother Clayton, too, at uh, Clayton underscore Sandell, right? That's right. Yep. I'm, uh, all right. I'm not a great <laughs> Twitter, but I, I try. <laughs> you do a great job. What are you talking <laughs> <Yeah>. about? <laughs> When you're not doing world international news reporting, yeah. sometimes you hop on Twitter. <laughs> Depressing yeah, okay. tragedy He posts like behind the scenes photos and he's like, oh, I'm not that great. I'm like <laughs> over here p- taking pictures of my sandwich being like, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was talking to Clayton on Twitter once and he's like, yeah, hang on. Uh, sorry for the delay. I'm here reporting on the, the volcanoes in Hawaii. I'm like, oh. I'm on my lunch break. <laughs> like, thanks for getting back to me. Like, you're way too busy, way too important. But thank you. Yeah, we have to fire off a few questions at you if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so we have a couple from us. You already answered mine about the treasure hunts and the uh, the tag sales and stuff like that, but James mm. and Lacey each have a couple questions, and then we have a few from our listeners that they would love to ask you too. So, fire away. Um, Lacey, take it away. You want me to go first? Or James or Lacey, whoever wants to ask their Here, question first I'll, in I'll our I'll version this of one Ask for the you. Resistance. What is, what is one thing you think that could happen in Episode Nine that you hope does doesn't happen could happen Nothing related to kylo though could happen yeah. that i don't want to happen yeah you think like a strong possibility that that this one thing could happen in the story and, and that story-wise you're like i just i hope that blank doesn't go to blank planet or something i know what La- but, i know uh, what Lacey's talking about uh and, and, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and i've been kylo for her and, question. and i've been thinking about that yeah oh god that's a good question um i don't want I, I like the idea that this is what always bothered me about um, about uh, Force Awakens is that uh, and others have brought this up too that you never got to see the big three together. Mm-hmm. So uh, my hope is that uh, the big the big. Who do you three, consider the big three? Because multiple people have different threes. Different so threes. What, yeah. Uh, uh, Ray, of course, Finn, and Poe. For me, I think. Okay. Are the cool. Big yep. three. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I would like to not see any of them meet their demise because um, I, I, I'd like to think that, may, that they could go on and continue to be in other films later, maybe. I don't know. Um, sure. So so that could happen. I don't want that to happen. I want them all to make gotcha. it through. Yeah, that's a great answer. So Lacey. Speaking of death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay. This is going to determine if we're friends or not. <laughs> <laughs> um no i'm just joking so um do you two parts do you think kylo ren or ben solo will is on a path for redemption this is a hot topic or or and or do you think he will die at the end of episode nine i think that i think that's a distinct possibility I, which one I, I, <laughs> that that he could die at the end of episode nine. I oh! think I think <laughs> uh, I, I think it's not outside the realm. I mean, he um, look he he killed Han Solo. Yeah, you know, I cannot forgive him for that. <laughs> cannot forgive him. So I can see that that happening. Um, but I don't know. Redemption has always been a powerful theme in Star Wars, so uh, you know uh, it wouldn't bother me if if that happened uh, too. Either way. So you're so if it was because John's very against redemption. Are you if really? If he got you, redeemed, yeah. and got as happy ever after, after you'd be okay with it. Well, can I can I be fair, lazy? I I just don't want them to repeat exactly what happened to Vader because okay, then it's fair. just kind of like fair. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that. It, 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 you're right. It would have to be different from that because he got his redemption, but then immediately died. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I want to see him have a happy ending. Um, but if there's a way to do that and still redeem him somehow, sure, why not? Cool. That's my question. <laughs> All right. Um, and now we have some from the listeners. 
So uh, thank you for sticking around and, and taking some of these. I know they appreciate that. Sure. And we had them tweeted out using hashtag Ask Clayton. So um, <laughs> this one is from at this is Nix, OT Nix. And they asked, of all the questions you've ever asked Star Wars actors, what is the funniest or maybe memorable answer or response to one of the questions you've asked? Mm, I, You know, it was funny. Uh, one of the most memorable things that happened after an interview is we were in Ireland with Mark Hamill and his lovely wife, Mary Lou, and his daughter, Chelsea. And one of the things that I kind of wanted to do, because they, they travel the world together when, they, when, they, uh, when, when Mark is working and just as a, as a family. And so I wanted to sit them all down and, and chat together and and talk about family life and one of the they don't do that very often which is precisely the reason that i wanted to do it and i don't think we use this in the interview but at the end of it we sat we sat in the uh, around a table having tea and and chatting for 15 or 20 minutes or whatever it was and at the end of it i'll never forget this um mark hamill says well that was fun I've never done that before, and I'm never doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> and he he said it in fun, but it was it was kind of funny. That's like, Mark. Uh, there you go. Yep. Now, did you get to keep like footage of that for yourself? Like, there's Mark Hamill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have I have copies of all that on my hard drive. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'll be showing my grandkids that someday probably. Very that was cool. cool. Um, all right, so this next one is from at Natal underscore CR. I guess Natalie, I'm guessing. I'm not sure. How do you prepare questions before interviews for Star Wars movies on a red carpet? Also, do you ever get starstruck? Funny story. Uh, during Solo, uh, I was going to the premiere of Solo, but had not um, uh, planned on on working at all. And, and literally mm. when I... Um, landed i flew from denver to la and i landed in la and turned on my phone and i get all of these emails asking if uh, from our digital uh side our website folks on our digital side wanted to know if i could do uh red carpet questions um for like instagram and live streams and stuff like that and i sort of panicked because i was just gonna go just for fun and and so i didn't prepare anything for the red carpet um and i just kind of pretend uh, just the, the mindset i sort of put myself in was just just being a fan and i was curious what their fandom was like so i asked them all kind of about their fandom and um uh, and just kind of I, I just kind of winged it and it almost turned out better because i hadn't over prepared for it it was one, more one, genuine it was a little more, it felt a little more genuine a little more spontaneous and one of the things that i find that i have to be careful of is getting if i if i prepare too much i almost get a little too far into the weeds for a general broad audience questions that you guys would probably appreciate and would want to know the answers to um you know can kind of get lost on, on a, when you're asking them for a larger audience so so i tried to keep yeah. it broad and tried to keep the themes broad and and that sort of thing but um uh so so that was one where where we just kind of winged it <laughs> and and it seemed to work and they're all they're all in a good mood and and played along and and um, you know, we're very, we're very gracious when I ask just stupid questions that they'd probably been asked a, a, mil <laughs> a million times before. Um, but otherwise, I, you know, and other things like the Rogue One or, or, you know, preparing to spend time with Mark Hamill in, in Ireland, I typically prepare these huge binders full of questions and there's a <laughs> hundred pages of research and, and you just trying to go through it and pick out uh boil it down and and try and uh try and prepare some things and and some questions and honestly half the time uh three quarters of those questions get thrown out because you you want to just sit down and, and have a conversation with somebody and mm -hmm. you know you're kind of prepared for a lot of things but uh the idea and when it's always best is to listen to the answers and see where where you should go next and and let that let mm -hmm. that be your guide so so we do a lot of a lot of reading writing preparing and and then sometimes you end up just tossing it well i know one joke you prepared which uh you 
sabotage Mark Hamill with in the parade in Ireland. You kind of came, went up to him and he's in the car and you, you said uh, something about, are you going to be at nine? And you like sprung that on him, like jokingly, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I said, uh, <laughs> he, he was, he was in the, in the parade and the car had stopped and, uh, I, there was something in the road or something ahead. He couldn't move. So he couldn't move. And I said, all right, I'm putting you on the spot. If they ask, would you like to be in episode nine? And uh, at the time, he, he laughed, <laughs> and he said, "He said, of course. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to come back?" And I don't, yeah. I don't think it was any like huge revelation that he wanted to come back. I think we all kind of expected he was going to come back, but it was a fun, it was a fun little moment. And he said at the time, he goes, "But it's all up to JJ, so take it up with him." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Pass the buck. Yeah. Um, all right. So the next one is from Adam Odell at. E. H. Odell, and he said, "From your vantage point, what's one common misconception about how Star Wars movies are made?" Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think the most common misperception is that the story group or Kathleen Kennedy, somebody on high, is dictating exactly where the story should go and exactly who should be in it, and exactly like I think there's a lot of. Um, uh, I think the filmmakers are given tremendous autonomy to come up with stories and use the story group as kind of a sto- sounding board for, for ideas and, and double checking and things like that. But I, uh, when you, when you see it online and people, people complaining, um, you know, I, I just get the sense that some people think that there is uh, much more control over this process, the creative process, than than there really is. That's actually refreshing and and good to hear. I love I love a take, a take like that because that's one thing people try to like trolls try to cloud that. Uh, oh, it's just yeah. Kathleen Kennedy's ruining Star Wars. And yeah, come on, stop. Right. Um, all right. Last question. Um, pretty simple and direct from uh, one of our good listeners, Evan at Harris Harris F nine said, favorite character in the sequel trilogy and why. Favorite character in the sequel trilogy? Ooh, um, I, I, it has to be Ray, and I think one of the reasons uh, was it was because I was so excited to share Star Wars with my daughter, who, when Force Awakens came out, would have been twelve. So she's right in that right in that age. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it was great. And I just, I remember going to the theater and, and standing in line and going in and sitting down and just the feeling I had when the logo came up and the crawl started and the music fanfare plays, all of these great things. And I remember several times in the film looking over at her to kind of see how she was responding <laughs> and, and mm-hmm. how cool it was to have this character leading the film essentially that, uh, that she could look up to in the same way that I looked up to Luke Skywalker. It was just such a cool bonding experience. And I appreciated that character probably more than anything for that reason. So what was her reaction when Ray grabs the lightsaber? Cause that's my favorite. Oh yeah. Rest of my life. That moment in the theater, I was the one person that was like, yeah, that it's music cue. Yeah, yeah. That music yeah. cue was great. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was terrific. Yeah. 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 There were some, there were some oohs and ahs at that moment for sure. Yeah. yeah it's a mm-hmm. great, great moment. So yeah, Ray stands out to me as as uh, the new new character that that um, that I've enjoyed the most. Yeah, I mean, I when I saw The Force Awakens, I was thirty two, something like that, thirty two. Yeah. And when she takes that last uh, the final scene after everything she's been through, and the Jedi steps music hits, like that mm-hmm. was the first time I started tearing at a Star Wars movie, and right, uh, just a great scene, great final scene, and and uh, you you nailed it. And I yeah. can't imagine having a daughter of that age and what getting to enjoy Star Wars through their eyes, through that character, uh, fantastic. So yeah, thank you for fun. that. And, and, yeah. And that's it. That's it for the questions. So thank you for being a champ and answering those, Clayton. <laughs> Absolutely. That was fun. <laughs> Let's do it again sometime. Yeah, that brings us to the end of the show. So um, first off, I want to say overall, thank you so much, Clayton, for coming on. Yeah. Yes. Thank you Anytime. Much. Thank you. Anytime, guys. Thank you. And what? One more time, where can people find you on uh, social media and, and that sort of thing? Mostly on the Twitter, um, at Clayton <laughs> underscore Sandell. Okay, great. And um, James and Lacey, why don't we do all of ours now? Where, where can we find you guys? Uh, Myra Trunks, M-I-R-A-H-T-R-U-N-K-S, Twitter, Instagram. 
People can find me uh, trying to convince people that Kylo Ren's not going to die in nine. <laughs> at Lacey Good luck. <laughs> All right. And I am John Hoey. You guys can find me at Johnny Hoey on Twitter and writing and editing over at StarWarsNewsNet.com. And uh, like I said, uh, check in, subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Go to our website, StarWarsNewsNet.com, every day. Thank you once again to Clayton Sandell one more time. Woo! Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Made it Such a good you. time. You are welcome <laughs> back anytime, sir. You have a key to the Resistance base forever. Oh, Thank fantastic. You. I love it. Thank you. Is it one of those giant keys? Out there... It's a giant key, right? <laughs> it's yes. a giant key, Perfect. just like those giant checks Good. in like uh, Game <laughs> Happy Gilmore. Yeah. Good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give me one of those giant um, keys. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> love it. And check back in with us on Thursday as we're going to talk about the full casting announcement, J.J. Abrams' tweet, and incorporate all that stuff that we talked about today with Clayton. So stay tuned, and we'll see you on Thursday right here on the Resistance Broadcast. See you around, kids. <laughs>